Hello, everybody. This is the Friendly Bear Podcast, where we interview some of the best and brightest traders in the trading community. Listen to inspiring stories and nuggets of insight from current and future game changers in the trading space. Listen and learn as we explore all types of trading niches with some of the best in the industry from a Friendly Bear point of view. Make sure to check out the Friendly Bear Podcast new YouTube channel called Friendly Bear Research which includes all the podcast video content and supplemental screen shares. If you enjoy the podcast, please consider leaving a five-star review on iTunes. With that being said, I'm your host, David, a.k.a. Reverse Long, and this is the Friendly Bear Podcast. Let's dive in. I'm with Adam Lambert of Zimtra Trading, and we're at the Los Angeles Athletic Club in the Blue Room. The blue room is like a like a secret spot. It's kind of hidden, and we're going to be having the last day of the conference. We're going to be having a, a mastermind here. It's going to be amazing. I'll work, so Adam is in town for the Conscious Trading Conference, which is tomorrow, Friday through Sunday, October 11th through the 13th. I got my friend and partner, Sam Degash. That's here, staying at the Athletic Club. We have a couple other people staying at the Athletic Club. Everybody's loving the athletic club. It's pretty awesome. They got the gym upstairs, uh, the like rooftop, five the floors. restaurants. Five floors. Yeah, of, gym. of gyms, of acti- gym activities. It's freaking awesome. So with that little intro, what's up, Adam? How's it going? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing great, man. It's great having you guys in town and seeing like uh, my whole neighborhood, even though it's kind of crazy. It's, it's different yeah. from, so I was in the Cayman Islands. So what, what's yeah. the different, the major difference you see between LA downtown and the Cayman Islands? There's a downtown. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's not, uh, I mean, this is spectacular. LA is, uh, pretty impressive. The, the tall buildings and the, uh, uh, just the sheer amount of people. Yeah. Uh, it's, there's yeah. only 70,000 people that live in Cayman Islands and the tallest structure is, I think one of the hotels that's maybe yeah. 12 or 13 stories right now. So yeah. it's a, uh, it's a sleepy quiet Island, but it's a financial Mecca. There's uh, yeah. 70% of the world's hedge funds are domiciled there. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's a pretty cool work-life balance you know it's stressful like anything else the market closes but instead of uh, heading downtown you head out to the beach so. yeah and uh there's no skyscrapers over there that's right? for sure yeah, yeah so we just had we had breakfast today either. at city club yeah, yeah that was spectacular yeah the views 51st floor yeah could see all of la yeah so and tomorrow we're going to go to u.s bank tower the 54th floor so that was 51 yeah more so we're going to be a tad bit above 54 but the u.s bank tower is 70 floors so Incredible. yeah came Islands doesn't have nothing what, like that what's the tallest building you think so like 12 13 stories <laughs> okay maybe but it's a beautiful island so i, I went there yeah i went there april i guess april great yeah, time it is paradise. Paradise. water pristine crystal clear yes you know really beautiful sparkling blue we're pretty lucky seven mile beach is uh consistently rated one of the top beaches in the in the world so wow nice and you got like snorkeling and uh diving uh-huh. is, is popular uh, stingray city you can go and swim swim with stingrays which is uh yeah very unique to cayman they're like big puppy dogs it's not wow. like the steve Irwin. uh not like that the yeah. stingrays no yeah these are quite domesticated but they are wild stingrays. yeah wow so actually so when sam has been here I don't know, since like four or five days now. And the, f- the second day we took, we took a trip to Santa Monica. And I was like, yeah, so when, when I showed Sam the water there, it's the Pacific, it's cold. And it's kind of like, it's kind of like dark water, yeah. uh, dark green, you know, almost black. Like, well, not black, like it's, it's just very dark and cold. Uh, but the Cayman Islands is like, is, is like clear. I was, I was letting him know. He's like, oh, it's like Cape Town. Because he's from Cape Town, yeah. South Africa. It's clear pristine water and uh yeah you know so very different parts of the world 30 meters of visibility in the ocean wow is what you can see it's pretty spectacular yeah awesome man <laughs> i gotta take a trip back I, I, for yeah, sure the came down sure. one hour host you again from, two hour flights from miami something like yeah. that yeah. yeah so um yeah what so tomorrow you're gonna be hanging out with us saturday the same and sunday so we got a whole whole series of events lined up. So I'm excited. Um, I feel bad for anybody who's not attending. I yeah, think it's yeah. going to be uh, one of the best events of the year. You guys put on a great show. I've been fortunate to hear some of the uh, some of the things that are going to be released and dropped, and I'm pretty excited about it myself. Yeah, so awesome. Hopefully, um, and some people have seen the podcast that we did together in Zoom. 
Um, but now you're here in the flesh. We're going to do it in the blue room. So I was letting you know, like, uh, I want to do more podcasts in this space. This is like an incredible space. For incredible life. if you can find it. Yeah, if you can find it. So Hidden it's, bookcase. It's uh, pretty slick. How did, like you, a, how did you find like it, by speak the way? Like a speakeasy. Well, you had, you had given me a clue. I said it was, there, you, you said walked there was by a book, it many a times. Bookshelf. Probably. I, yeah, so I actually, uh, I, it was literally the last area. Oh, that so you I didn't ask checked. anybody? No. Oh, okay. No. I thought maybe no. you asked somebody, hey, where's that bookshelf? I, thing I managed to walk by and I did a double. There's a little bit of light coming around the door. <laughs> Had I not uh, been looking for it, you're right. I it's walked a bookshelf. by it a dozen and it's times dark. and didn't see it. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Very cool up here. So, so when you open the bookshelf, what made you <clears> want to continue to, because it's, it's still like a tunnel. It, you got you to gotta explore, <laughs> for sure. I guess it's the same, same reason that you get into trading, right? Yeah. Yeah, you gotta, <laughs> like you gotta a segue. explore. You gotta, you gotta test the waters, and you gotta jump in sometimes. So. Yeah, um, to go with trading. Okay, so maybe uh, to refresh the the listeners, and maybe there's newer listeners. Recently, I've had a jump in subscribers uh, recently. So, like, maybe you wanna give the people a brief background on on yourself and Zimtra. For sure. Yeah, I, I actually started uh, as a trader back in uh, two thousand and three, two thousand and four. I was a dark pool trader, so Millennium was uh, one of the um, uh, main routes that uh, gave us access to the dark pools. So there was a, a handful of us when it first first started, um, and we figured out how the uh, essentially algorithms were designed to buy and sell in the market, uh, and we we had ways of identifying where the where the liquidity was. Um, and we turned that into quite a large strategy. At one point, I was trading something like three to four million shares a day, and I think 3,000 unique trades. So it was quite big. Uh, I got into teaching. I traveled around and, and taught, uh, taught uh, this strategy to, I'd say, 50, 60 people um, that then ran with it and turned it into five- and six-figure figure incomes. Uh, in 2012, I was asked to come on as mine and management for for Zimtra and and help establish the the company in in Cayman Islands. So I've been there since 2012, running running the show, and uh, now we support close to 5,000 traders across. Uh, I gotta, I usually say 18 countries, but I've been told that we're closer to 50, 60 countries now. So wow, it's a pretty pretty big. I, I think we are the largest <clears throat> in the U.S. equity prop trading space. Gotcha. So I remember like at breakfast today, you were mentioning uh, Zimtra has been around for like 20 years. So our management team, myself, I've been trading our, our CEO. He's been he actually executed, I think, the third electronic trade of all time. So we go back quite a way in the industry. Uh, we've we've always supported traders in the background. Uh, up until recently, actually, we didn't have an offering that was direct to traders. We were uh, supporting 50, 60 groups that were essentially white labeling what uh, what we had created, our infrastructure and our, and our capital. Um, about a year ago, we decided that uh, there was a lot of countries that we weren't in and a lot of people that we weren't helping. So we decided to create uh, uh, Zimtra. Uh, well, Zimtra brand had been around since about 2017, 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, but about a year ago is only when we really started putting the word out there and, and created a user-facing product that uh, supports people uh, not just groups. So we had an institutional product before, and now we have a consumer-centric. Uh, I product. see. And what made you guys want to expand to this? Uh, uh, consumers get into different get into different markets. Yeah, there was a lot of countries that we weren't in at the time, and as I said, a lot of people we weren't able to to help. Um, we were great at supporting uh, some very very large groups and in, in all around the world, but. We thought it was time for us to to get out there and uh, and help traders directly. So, gotcha. And um, so Zimtra is a prop firm. We covered this in the last podcast, but to make it clear, because it's, it's sometimes a little bit confusing. So it's a prop <laughs> firm because it's offshore. And it's a prop firm because you're trading the house's money. Yeah. So we we have a, a regulated fund, and all the trading happens in that fund. What we do is we find professional traders with with proven strategies, and we give them software that they install. We have several options for software, uh, but they execute their strategy through uh, our clearing account, and then we obviously have a profit split that's either ninety percent, ninety or one hundred percent to the trader. But uh, it allows a trader to to scale much much faster 
Um, obviously, a, a broker dealer, you need to put in thirty thousand uh, dollars. Our account minimum is a thousand dollars, but the benefit also is there's no pattern day trading rule because you're actually trading in our account. Uh, you you can get in and out as, as many trades as you want, whenever you want. So gotcha. also volume discount on fees. That's probably one of the key selling factors. So lower cost commissions, better locates, cheaper costs. Um, that you can leverage what we've created. Yeah, you guys have like the cheapest low case commission. So how are you guys able to to make it so so cheap? Yeah, we we've been around for a long time, and and we knew that that was something that was lacking in in the space. Um, we spent a couple years uh, putting together, working with our providers in order to uh, uh, to provide a solution that that ultimately finds the best cost for locates to the traders mm -hmm. uh, and we pass that uh, pass that cost uh, with little to no markup um, to back to the trader so there's a lot of companies that will inflate that price and, and offer some significant discounts um, we just offer a great product at a great price yeah and um, service we touched on this in the last podcast too and this is something that you guys are like the service is immaculate you were talking about like um, at breakfast you got even got like a Discord version for yeah yeah and and we're we are we pride ourselves on on our support. I mean it's easy to say, but uh, I think anybody that's worked with us would would attest to that. Um, we have some great great feedback from people as far as the efforts that we put in. It, it started, and I, I think what I was saying at breakfast was uh, early on. So 2012, 2013. Uh, I was traveling around to a lot of conferences, and I, I kept asking trader this, traders the same thing. If you had a higher percent payout, if you had lower fees, or you had better support, what would you value more? And pretty much everybody said better support. They said, you know, a couple extra dollars uh, in profit or lower fees isn't going to change much. But if I'm in a bad situation and I can't get the support that I need in a timely fashion, then that could be an exponential loss. So knowing that, we, we really shifted our focus from what our priorities were as a company for uh, to, to create systems that allowed us to support traders in, in real time. So you're talking about the Discord. Recently, we know that there's a lot of people that are in Discord. Uh, and we want to meet people where they are and give them timely, uh, timely support. So we created a, a, a Discord bridge that goes from obviously various Discord channels back to our main support team. So that we can offer people support directly where they're, you know, learning and 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 the communities in which they are in. Gotcha. And um, what about uh, okay? So Zimtra is for international. Correct. It's an international trading partner because it's a it's a prop. It's a prop firm. Now, what about domestic? Do any domestic traders have any options? Uh, in the U.S., unfortunately, not at this time. We don't support anybody in, in, the, in the U.S. currently. So. Gotcha. And uh, so, so when I was in Cayman Islands with you guys, we came up with a route, uh, the Kappa SOAR, yeah. the smart order routing. So um, so whoever, whoever uses, uh, signs up with Zimtro with Friendly Bear is, is, uh, has access to this route. So like you guys also do custom routing and do all this uh, for sure cool stuff and and that's the benefit of us having previously an institutional product that now we're releasing to the general public, but uh, for example, Capasor taking your strategy uh, and the execution advantage that you need in order to 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 get the liquidity that you want in a timely fashion at the right price, that's something that we can we can or we did work with you to to find. Uh, the right balance of liquidity and cost, and come back with something that uh, that then helps you to maximize your strategy. So yeah, and, and it's been it's been extremely helpful because there's some traders that are learning under me that I'm, I'm mentoring, and they're using this these strategy these uh these routes, and it helps you know, facilitate the trade and be like really efficient. So you know because it's like you want to be as efficient as you can and any trading. edge you can yeah, get any edge you can get just all adds up over everybody a sees opportunity time. at the same time your ability to react to that opportunity yeah. is going to be what gets you and the, and the, the amount profit. of locate uh routes available and you know you, having all that to your advantage is, is and the, the price of the commissions and the service and you know having i think it's important too with whoever is your trading partner or broker you know you you know who they are and like you have a relationship with them they're like they have good people they have the good values you know so like i think you, you guys like i can attest because like i know you guys and like um 
And it's because like when people ask me out of the blue, it's like, oh, it's a, a offshore broker. It's like the first thing that comes to mind sure. is, yeah. is uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not a, it's not like a. It's not a pleasant, uh, you know, from the history of offshore. Yeah, it came, came on historically had a had a stigma. Um, I can attest. There's no pirates that are there. Uh -huh. um, every all the big the big five are there. Uh, as I said, seventy plus percent of the world's hedge funds are domiciled there. Uh, it's a it's a strong, thriving uh, legal framework. Um, we're not on any blacklists or gray lists. Um, you know, we comply with with every single regime that. Uh, that we need to, um, yeah, you know, that there was a time in the '70s and '80s where Cayman might have been the Wild West. I won't, dis I won't uh, dismiss that. But uh, today, it's uh, it's a it's a thriving financial hub that uh, that allows international businesses to to set up very very quickly, uh, but with uh, economic substance. So. Uh, there's no, you know, PO boxes that uh, that there were 10, 15 years ago. Uh, now there is actual physical presence, and companies are coming to Cayman and actually setting up shop and and using the the infrastructure that's been created over years in the hedge fund industry. So that's that's great that you pointed out. So for those that are unaware, because uh, people might have a vague understanding of the Cayman Islands. So the Cayman Islands is one of the wealthiest nations in the world. I think it's like some of the most billionaires are there. I think um, yeah, the per capita forty three per yeah forty three out of seventy thousand people. There's hardly no crime, I imagine. Somebody's going to be fact checking me on that yeah. one. <laughs> I googled it the other day. How about I, what's yeah. the crime rate there? It's like I don't think it, yeah, it's, it's a safe safe place to live. It's, <laughs> it's uh, and we have you know guys like yourself come down and visit us and, yeah. and to be able to walk you know go go see the different hotels and walk yeah. between restaurants and you know oh, everything is clean. It's nice walking up the beach at yeah. you know eleven twelve o'clock at night. You, you feel very very safe. Yeah, and then you, you mentioned the big five. What does that mean? The big five auditing firms? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. Accounting like, firms like I, PwC, I saw buildings EY, there. I saw them Deloitte. There, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know when I'm at the uh, City Club, all those buildings that I see, they're all there, around, they're all, yeah. all there in Cayman Islands, supporting that uh, that infrastructure. Yeah, so that's it's it's a legit environment, it's for a legit sure. Environment. Yeah. So, and um, as a as a as a Canadian, there's uh, tax advantages for uh, for for people that are in uh, Cayman as a British overseas territory. Uh -huh. So anybody that's still tied to the crown has uh, has tax advantages for. for I being see. In the, I see. So yeah. it's like the Puerto Rico for you guys. I would say so. So Puerto yeah. Rico is like for the U.S. The yeah. tax advantages. Yeah. For, for sure. any what is it? How do they say it? crown? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Crown, crown country. Crown, crown country. Yeah. Sure. They get tax advantage, and that includes. So there's zero income tax and zero corporate tax. Ah. So okay. It's it's tax neutral. It's not tax free. And so the population there is seventy thousand. Seventy thousand people. So small. Tiny. Yeah. yeah. You're there for a, a few few years, and you you can quite quickly know just about everybody there, which is which is great. That that uh, if there's bad actors, you know about them very, yeah. very quickly. If you and uh, I, so the, I remember when I was there, like the police service. You guys volunteer to do police service. Yeah. So uh, one of the guys. Uh, at the one of the guys is... from our team uh, was uh, was a constable. Uh, started. Um, Volunteering during uh, COVID and lockdown actually became a, a full-fledged police officer, uh, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's nice knowing that somebody on your team is uh, is yeah. helping to keep no, for the sure. safe. For, for sure. sure, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, well, yeah, awesome. Anything else you want to mention? I, that's that's about it. I hope uh, you know. I'm excited to be working with you guys, and I'm excited to uh, for the conference this weekend. And I hope that um, if anybody is not participate and hasn't participated yet, and they're thinking about it, and they're on the on the cusp, they got to get down here. And they gotta, yeah, I'm, I'm excited, man. Participate. It's it's our biggest turnout yet. We sold out of VIP, and we're awesome. just about sold out of the regular regular tickets. Um, it, it's a the the crowd we attract is amazing it's like an intimate setting is like I, we usually come you know, after the event we know everyone more or less like a, a really you know like mm -hmm. their whole background and so it, it get people get to really know each other and, and like really network and like make friends and like trading buddies or accountability friends you know so and you guys are doing something different you're yeah. you're recreate or reinventing how how these conferences and how communities built and i think that's uh, that's yeah. very very impressive. It, it's cool man yeah what sam and i have done is you know it's very unique and we're very proud of it you know and utilizing uh you know in, in la i never really get anyone coming visiting la once a blue you know 
Um, we had Roland uh, in June, Roland Wolf, and uh, a couple of other people have passed through. But like, I really don't get to share my neighborhood, especially the facilities. I, I like it, you know. It's like the athletic club. So, so yeah. So I wanted to. So you mentioned the five floors of uh, athletics. Yeah. So you saw the indoor track. Indoor track, the pool, the pool, basketball court. Uh, the, that was the basketball court's pretty cool. You There's know the a running you, track that goes around the, the yeah. whole building. So, so but it do you know the Wooden Award of uh, college basketball? Do you I, follow? Call? You don't probably. Don't I haven't. No. So college anything. basketball in the U.S. and CAA, they give out the Wooden Award here at okay. the athletic club. It's the, for the 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 what do you call it? The top college basketball athlete every year gets presented the award here, the Wooden Award. Amazing. So that's why the court, so when you see the court, it says wooden, yeah. that it's the wooden court. And sure. sometimes the LA Lakers basketball players or what's the other team here? Uh, the Clippers. The couple of players might come and practice here. Yeah. And uh, back in the day, you're, cool you're staying at the hotel. One of those rooms, I don't know which one, was a Charlie <laughs> Chaplin's room. Really? Yeah. And uh, Mailer Monroe stayed here. Yeah. So Amazing. very big history. All the, all the, all the, uh, Actors and celebrities, you know, LA, back in the day, the silent film era, yeah. 20s, 30s, they would come here and just get their hair cut, have a drink, go to the pool, go to jacuzzi. You can tell there's a lot of so, history here. Yeah, you can see all this, yeah. uh, I'll, all this I'll, stuff, I'll man. I'll definitely be staying here. I, next I love time. it, I love man. the fact that there's, I mean, the gym facilities are phenomenal. Oh, it's and the, phenomenal, yeah. Uh, they've got the plunge pools. Have you done I it? I did not. That no, Sam loves no. that thing. He's in there like every morning. Uh, he was saying he's <laughs> far braver and tougher than I am. Uh, I, I said I'd be embarrassed to yeah. get in there because the, uh, the noises I'd probably make would yeah. not be appealing to it's anybody a, else. In I went in there a couple of times. It's, it takes getting used to it. Yeah. It takes your breath away. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, so um, yeah, man, I'm looking forward to everything. We, we're uh, going to be doing some more podcasts and stuff, so looking forward to it. Sounds great. Thank you for having me. All right, guys, well, that concludes it, and stay tuned. We got a lot more coming. That concludes today's episode. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel on the platform you use. The Friendly Bear Podcast is hosted by me, David, where you can find me on Twitter at reverse underscore long. You can find the Friendly Bear Podcast at www dot the friendly bear podcast.com as well as on apple Podcasts, spotify audible amazon music and now on youtube at friendly bear research until next time thank you for listening to the friendly bear podcast